the last lecture we were discussing about uh, the clustering criterion actually and uh, in that way we are going to compare various partitions uh, that are induced by clustering. Uh, so, we had come up to this point that let me just recollect clustering criteria is what we were looking at. So, this what we are trying to do is to compare or comparing various partitions induced by clustering and in order to derive the criterion we had uh, said that uh, suppose we have the data in the following form that uh, we have some dimensional data say p dimensional data we have x 1, x 2, x n these n observations. So, these are basically the n observations on the multi dimensional data and they have and we had introduced this sample variance covariance matrix as sigma hat with a divisor say n that is a maximum likelihood estimator as 1 upon n i equal to 1 to n x i minus m which is the grand mean x i minus m transpose. We had defined m to be the grand mean in the last lecture. So, with this sigma hat we had also defined a random variable this I uh, will say that rather than definition define this z j i that was defined to be a binary variable taking values 1 and 0 1 if x i the ith observation belongs to cluster j and is equal to 0 if it is otherwise. So, with this z j i indicator variable defined we had the within cluster sum of squares and cross product scatter matrix given by the following uh, we had S w in the last lectures notation then a summation j equal to 1 2 up to g where g is the number of clusters and i equal to 1 2 up to n z j i that multiplied by x i minus m j, m j is the cluster mean corresponding to the jth cluster x i minus this m j vector it is transpose. So, this we interpret as a pooled within cluster pooled within cluster scatter matrix over the g clusters. So, suppose we have in a clustering algorithm giving us g clusters then S w the sum of squares and cross product scatter matrix is going to be defined by this particular quantity and we also defined this between cluster sum of squares and cross product scatter matrix which is nothing but S B matrix which is given by this sigma hat matrix minus what is the within cluster sum of squares and cross product matrix and it is elementary to see that this actually reduces to j equal to 1 to up to q n j divided by n and then we have this as m j minus m the grand mean that multiplied by m j minus m its transpose. So, this basically indicates the scatter of the cluster means about the grand mean which is m, wherein here this n j term is nothing but summation of z j i terms for i equal to 1 to up to n because z i j is equal to 1 
if x i belongs to the jth cluster and hence this particular sum of the indicators for i equal to 1 to n all the data is going to give us the number. So, this is the number of items in cluster j. So, that is the interpretation uh, what we have. Now, having defined this within cluster sum of squares cross and cross product matrix as S w and the between uh, cluster sum of squares and cross product scatter matrix to be S b, what we ha have actually the popular criterion for comparing various partitions are based on univariate functions of these quantities. So, the popular clustering popular clustering criteria are based on univariate functions of uh, based on univariate functions of this S B matrix or S W matrix or this sigma hat matrix or a combination of these matrices. Now, one such measure or one such criterion is what is given by the following quantity. It looks at minimization of the trace of one of these matrices which is S w, minimization of trace of S w. So, what is trace of S w? Recall that what is S w from the previous slide here. So, S w is this particular quantity. So, we are looking at trace of this quantity. So, that is 1 upon n summation j equal to 1, 2 up to g summation i equal to 1, 2 up to n. Then we have z j i that into x i minus m j into x i minus m j transpose. So, we are looking at trace of this. Now, trace can be taken inside because trace of a b equal to trace of a plus trace of b. So, one can write this in the following way that it is 1 upon n g equal to 1 2 up to g. Then we take trace inside the second uh, sum here. So, it is z j i and then trace of this quantity which is x i minus m j into x i minus m j transpose right. Now, trace of a b equal to trace of b a. So, we can write that as summation j equal to 1 2 up to g summation over i equal to 1 2 up to n then z j i into this quantity is nothing but x i minus m j square. So, this term is this only. So, what we have or what we can write is 1 upon n a summation g equal to 1 2 up to q and then this entire term here which is a function of j which is depending on j. So, for the particular j we write that as s j where we for completion write that this s j is nothing but this particular quantity which is z j i x i minus m j square this i equal to 1 2 up to n. Now, what is this quantity? If you look carefully at this particular quantity, this is going to be uh, n j number of terms for which this z j i will be equal to 1. For the rest of the small n minus n j terms, this z j i is equal to 0. So, corresponding to those, what we are doing is looking at the vector uh, x i item and then looking at its deviation from its mean. So, this basically is giving us the within group sum of squares for cluster j, sum of squares for cluster j. And then we are looking at when we are looking at trace of S w, we are looking at sum of that basically average 1 upon n for each of these observations. So, this trace of S w is this quantity and for different um, uh, say prospective clusters or competing clusters corresponding to different partitions of the data. What one is looking at is to look at which of those partitions, which of those possible partitions uh, is giving us the minimum value of trace of this S w. 
and that is what is the desirable quantity because minimization of this particular sum here, minimization of this summation j equal to 1 to up to g of S g, where S g terms are within group sum of squares for that cluster g is basically trying to uh, look at what is the minimum quantity of that because we are looking at the minimum quantity of these terms in each of these clusters and what are these it is basically trying to ensure that cluster number j is as compact as possible. So, if that particular j cluster is as compact as possible, we will be having a minimum possible value of that S j corresponding to the j cluster and we look at over all possible such clusters and that thus becomes a criterion. So, from the discussions that we are looking at uh, this minimization, minimization of this trace of S w matrix is equivalent to the following is equivalent to minimizing the total within cluster within cluster sum of squares sum of squares about the G clusters. So, that is what is the interpretation of this trace of S w. So, it is uh, valid that we can take this trace of S w as one criterion for choosing among possible partitions among possible clusters in the data, because if we are looking at minimizing this particular quantity, we are looking at minimizing this quantity and hence for every cluster j we are looking at minimizing this quantity which is the within group sum of squares for the jth cluster because it is looking at the deviation from that particular cluster mean right. There are other criteria uh, I will say that other yeah other criteria the, the following are other type of criterion which are say looking at minima, minimum of the following that it is determinant of S w by determinant of sigma hat. This is actually minimum over all possible such partitions S b plus S w. So, it is looking at this particular ratio which is the ratio of the determinant of the within cluster uh, sum of square and cross product matrix S w that divided by the total which is sigma hat. Some other criterion are to look at maximum of trace of S w inverse times S b or to look at minimum of the trace of sigma hat inverse times S w. So, these are there are other type of criterion also for looking at what is the best that one can uh, actually look at uh, while comparing various possible partitions of the data, various possible clusters that are coming. Uh, say for example, if one is considering uh, a hierarchical clustering method, so based on the threshold distance one can have different types of partitions of the data and then uh, a criteria based on which one can actually uh, look at the optimum partition of the data uh, is to look at which uh, partition is basically looking at the minimum or the maximum whichever be the opti uh, optimum criterion uh, is corresponding to that particular setup. Now, let me look at uh, some actual real life examples in order to look at the clustering analysis what we have learned uh, so far. So, we look at some practical applications fra practical data analysis concerning this cluster analysis technique. We will look at the standard technique. So, I will discuss about two applications. The first application is looking at uh, the profitability characteristics of public sector banks in India. Now, the objective in doing that is uh, we are looking at clustering of public sector banks, not only public sector banks actually we are looking at uh, we will also look at other private sector banks and uh, all banks pooled together. So, what sort of clustering does uh, one can actually have? when one is looking at uh, all public sector banks operating in India based on their financial characteristics. Now, when we say that we are looking at financial characteristics of financial companies, it is uh, not that we look at one just one variable, it is usually a very high dimensional multivariate characteristic vector uh, 
that is what is usually looked at. And uh, thus, we have uh, the following case that we have uh, say k number of financial institutions, which in this case are public sector banks operating in India and each of them has got a characteristic vector. The characteristic vector is uh, based on uh, say financial characteristics. Now, there are various types of financial characteristics that one can define. Uh, in this analysis, we have used um, the following profitability ratios. Uh, some of them are derived from the balance sheet of the respective banks themselves. Uh, so, we have these listed variables as the profitability ratios like return on equity, return on asset, cost of deposit, cost of borrowing, return on advances, return on investment, operating profit to total assets, interest income to total income, other non-interest income to total income ratio, commission etcetera to total income, net interest income to total assets ratio and various other important financial indicators. So, it is corresponding to each of the financial institutions, we will be having such a multidimensional da data where the dimensions of the data are these profitability ratios. Right? So, suppose we consider 25 uh, such financial uh, ratios, then each of the financial institutions, they, though are, those are the items or the cases here, they are having a 25 dimensional data and that is what is the problem. And we are looking at that multidimensional data and looking at what sort of clustering does actually emerge from such a, such a data. Now, we have learnt in the theory part what uh, a hierarchical cluster analysis is. Uh, remember, there are uh, two approaches of uh, constructing a hierarchical cluster analysis. One was the agglomerative algorithm, uh, agglomerative hierarchical clustering analysis. Uh, the other one was a divisive clustering algorithm. We had discussed about different measures by which uh, one can actually look at uh, distances between various clusters, which is an important consideration when we look at construction of such hierarchical clustering. Now, that theory is implemented in the following figure. We construct a hierarchical uh, cluster analysis or a dendrogram tree from this Indian commercial banks. What we have here is a similar type of picture that is what we were discussing in the theory part. So, if we look at uh, on the y axis, we have as before the linkage distance or the merger or the fusion levels. If we look at at a very high distance, then all the banks appear to be uh, belonging to one single cluster. And if we make uh, the resolution level so fine that the distance is very small, then we will have all the cases to be members of singleton member uh, singleton unit clusters. Now, what we have here uh, at the end is that uh, we can see that say for example, this is a branch here of the dendrogram tree, which actually have these following uh, banks, which is the Bank of Rajasthan, United Commercial Bank, uh, United Bank of India and Indian Bank. Based on the data, that is what we had uh, for uh, mid uh, 2000s actually, 2005 or around 2006, the data was from that particular period. We see that clearly there is a cluster formation of these four banks, which is indicated from the branch. That is what we have from this, if we cut off the tree the dendrogram tree at this particular level, we will see that mainly there are two branches. This is one branch under which there are four banks and all other banks are in one single branch. If we get our resolution level down to this particular level, we will now find that there are one, two, three and four such branches of the tree and hence four clusters in the data at that particular level. As we go down in the resolution, we actually we make our resolution level finer and finer we will have more and more clusters emerging. So, uh, I considered if you consider the branch cutoff at this particular linkage distance, you will find that all these cases which are listed here and inside this particular figure, they are belonging to this particular branch. So, those are sub branches of this particular main branch and hence all the cases below this particular br branch are belonging to one single cluster the banks are indicated uh, which are the, these are basically new private sector banks as you can see ICICI bank, HDFC bank, Indusind bank and development credit bank and all those banks Centurion bank are also present in this particular cluster. Now, the big cluster here is the other banks which we have here. Now, one can also slice it along this particular level and then look at various clusters that are formed. I have just as an indicative um, uh, indication of uh, these uh, clusters that are formed, I put these 
figures so that these banks belong to one single cluster, these banks belong to one cluster, these belong to one cluster which are coming under this particular branch of the tree. Then these, uh, these banks come under this branch here, these branches, uh, these ba banks come under this branch here and so on. So, you will find that uh, the clustering that we have obtained at the end of the day, the hierarchical clustering, they naturally have a hierarchy in the formation of the clusters and um, very interesting clusters do actually emerge. If you look at the last uh, cluster that we have under this particular branch here. So, this branch of the dendrogram tree branches out to include all these banks here. What are these? These are State Bank of India, SBI and all its associates. So, it is basically the cluster of all those State Bank of India and associates group which of course, have a similar structure of their business and hence they belong to one single cluster out here. So, this is how one actually gets to a hierarchical cluster analysis. Now, a point that I had made when uh, we were looking at the theoretical discussions of this particular subject that such a hierarchical cluster analysis technique is not advisable if we have a large data set. If we have that is if we have more and more cases the x axis will become so crowded that it would be difficult for us to have such nice clusters as are formed in this particular data. And hence in such a situation one usually does not use a hierarchical clustering if the data size is too large one looks at a k means clustering which is a non hierarchical clustering technique. Now, if we apply uh, a non hierarchical clustering to the same data we get such clusters. This is the output of a k means clustering algorithm for um, the same data. We have in cluster 1 these banks, in cluster 2 State Bank of India and mostly its associates. You may note that this Punjab National Bank later on merged with uh, State Bank of India associates. Uh, cluster number 3 consisting of all these banks here. So, each of these banks were initially from the data set were characterized by that high dimensional multivariate data and based on the algorithm they have either been classified using say um, statistical uh, non hierarchical clustering method like the k means clustering or the hierarchical clustering method leading us to the previous figure of uh, that dendrogram tree right. You see a cluster 4 of these banks here, uh, then we have a cluster f uh, 5 of uh, these banks, cluster 6 for these banks, these are the clusters emerging not only from public sector banks, all uh, commercial banks in India including uh, corporate uh, the, those um, uh, what are those called the private sector, public sector and corporate banks. Then cluster number 7 are mostly good performing private sector banks, ICICI, HDFC, Times Bank, many of these banks later on merged. Then cluster 8 is the cluster of these banks. Now, in the theoretical lectures, one ha we have also looked at the principal component analysis. Now, principal component analysis is a very uh, powerful technique for data dimension reduction, not only data dimension reduction, it also looks at uh, multi dimensional projection, projection of multi dimensional data. And if we look at the data structure, that is what we have, it is basically multi dimensional characteristic data. And then from a principal component projection of the same multi dimensional data, one can also look at some rough clustering in the data. So, if we have the principal component projection uh, applied to the same data, we have this three dimensional figure, the dimensions are the first three principal components, uh, this is the first principal component axis, the second principal component axis and the third principal component axis. So, each of these cases, each of these multi dimensional data are now represented by the first three dimensions in the principal component and then looking at that three dimensional figure one can once again come up with uh, different clusters emerging. Now, these are subjective clusters of course, one can also have idea about outliers in the data as was discussed in the theoretical lectures of principal component analysis. If you see that there is a bank which is in the Indian bank, this is bank of Rajasthan uh, and these banks are clearly outlier banks which does not actually are included in the main data cluster in this project principal component projection of the data. So, these are some subjective clusters that are taken out from this principal component projection. Once again we see that there are some meaningful clusters not as well defined clusters as the out type of output that one gets from a cluster anal uh, analysis technique like the ones that I have discussed just now. So, this is a three dimensional uh, principal component analysis projection and the corresponding clustering.
now this is an interesting uh, uh, aspect of uh, looking at this multidimensional data uh, something which is called a chain of phase chain of phase is a way to uh, look at visualization of a multidimensional data vector and it's a powerful technique actually because if uh, we look at uh, dimensions 2 3 one can visualize how the data is uh, looking like but if we have dimensions more than 3 then the data cannot actually be visualized uh, so, however, there are various techniques for visualizing those multidimensional data and to me chain of face is one of those uh, methods which give us a nice pictorial representation of a multidimensional data. So, with the same multidimensional data used for the cluster analysis in this example, we obtain the chain of faces of all those banks. Now, uh, to a layman if you look at a, a face here, the chain of face actually represents multidimensional data through faces. Now, why faces? Because faces, uh, face uh, representation or face characteristics is one that one can easily uh, actually decipher and then looking at just the face of that multidimensional data, what one can see is that corresponding to the health of that particular multidimensional data, if one is at all concerned about that. Now, in our example, we have uh, the financial characteristics of financial institutions, mainly the Indian commercial banks. Now, if a bank looks smiling, like for example, ICICI bank, you will, uh, you will actually understand that uh, that particular bank's entire multidimensional characteristics have been now represented by this particular figure and if the face is smiling, you will associate the interpretation that the bank is performing well. So, you see that the ICICI bank, the HDFC bank, the Global Trust bank, Indusind bank, JNK bank and uh, some of the other banks have a smiley face some of the banks on the other hand does not look at all smiling like for example, the Indian bank. So, the financial characteristics of the, this particular financial institution, the Indian bank is not at all good actually and thus the uh, facial representation uh, of the multidimensional data uh, gives a sad looking face of that particular financial institution. Uh, you can one can also look at multidimensional trends in the data. Uh, through such chain of faces by looking at uh, multidimensional data over a period of time and look at how the faces are evolving over time and thus leading us to uh, detect some sort of a multidimensional trend in the data. This is not exactly cluster analysis, but this is a multidimensional uh, visualization uh, or visualization of multidimensional data. Now, there are other ways of looking at clustering. Uh, what we have discussed in the theoretical lectures were uh, statistical cluster analysis techniques. Now, apart from the standard classical statistical cluster analysis techniques, the uh, clustering can also be obtained under different philosophies. Like for example, if we look at uh, artificial intelligence uh, approach, then self organizing map is another uh, method which actually leads us to uh, looking at clusters in the data, they have several advantages actually over classical statistical cluster analysis techniques in various senses that uh, they not only give clusters in the data, they also look at uh, how compact the clusters are. So, just by looking at the uh, figure itself, the self organizing map uh, what we have uh, tried to produce here, this these type of maps actually not only lead us to understanding clusters in the multidimensional data but also lets us uh, understand the compactness of each of those clusters, detection of multidimensional outliers and how well the clusters are separated from one another. So, the same multidimensional data is used in order to get to this self organizing uh, profitability map of the data now which is represented in terms of this beehive actually. So, this is a hexagonal um, blocks here one after the other which is uh, this three dimen uh, two dimensional representation. Now, we have well defined clusters as what we have the banks in this region here have high profit, high business per employee and they are basically the new private sector league of banks. Now, we have a nice cluster which is emerging out here which are the high commission income to the total income banks and all the banks here in this particular region are state bank of India and its associate. So, they form a very compact cluster among themselves. Uh, now, what is so common and what is uh, in any way high commission? Commission is basically uh, these state bank of India and its associates, they perform all the government businesses and the government say for example, they take in 
uh, income tax um, chalans and etc so these are government businesses that uh, these um, group of banks actually perform and then they get commissions from the government of india and that's basically uh, a characterization of this particular uh, sector here we have a cluster being formed here these are the banks which have high non performing assets and cost of deposit so they are basically banks which do not perform that particular well there are two clusters here cluster number 4 and cluster number 3 and cluster number 2 here which are formed from the self organizing map here now the way that clusters are detected from such a self organizing map is that one looks at uh, say patches of uh, shades of white leading us to believe that there uh, say these if two units here are separated by units which have a lower shades on a gray scale that indicates that those two units are say some sort of closely associated and hence can be put in one single cluster and thus patches of light shades in such a self uh, in such a SOM plane leads us to having an interpretation of the data that such areas actually are associated with formation of clusters in the data on the other hand if we find cases which are in the dark patches we will understand that those are outliers now this type of figure also is sometimes visualized using a three dimensional so called hill valley surface plot representation of this self organizing map wherein actually we look at a three dimensional visualization of this where the dimension of uh, say this color uh, say either light shade or a dark shade of gray is now having a third dimension here and thus here the valleys are places where the clusters are formed and the peaks here are the points where outlying observations are present in the data right so corresponding to the previous figure when we had one here one two three and four the same figure is represented in terms of that three dimensional hill valley plot so whatever cases were there in that one sector which was state bank of india and its associates they are in this particular valley in this hill valley plot here now people in the valley they we uh, say we can say that they are like minded people uh, which reside in a particular valley and the like minded cases are basically put in this particular valley and which form a closed cluster clearly separated from the other clusters because the height of the hill lying in between cluster number 1 and the remaining clusters is quite well demarcated and hence this is a very close compact cluster and so is cluster number 2 however the demarcation be between cluster number 2 and cluster number 3 is not well that well defined as that is for one and the rest of the clusters although there is some height in between the two clusters 2 and 3 as regards to cluster number 3 and 4 we have uh, the two uh, or rather the characteristics of the two clusters are almost the similar however they are quite different uh, as this particular dark patch here is indicating well where is this particular location here this particular location here is on a higher plane which is located in this particular drop down there if we look at this in this particular other side of the um, hill valley plot we will have the other banks uh, which were represented here high profit and high business per employee basically the more efficient private sector banks so clustering can also be obtained from such an approach of self organizing map which is an approach of an artificial intelligence technique now the same uh, data when we had the uh, som representation and the hill valley real, uh, representation or the visualization of the self organizing map this is another way to look at that particular clustering which is called the component plane visualization which actually looks at each of the constituent variables now these were remember the variables which actually were used in that multidimensional data so we have this 15 plus 4 19 such variables which had led to the all the previous visualizations in the data now looking at this also one gets to nice interpretation of the clusters that have been formed in the data for example if you look at uh, this particular region that was the region corresponding to the high uh, let me just go back to that particular figure this was the region where we had high profit and high business per employee 
And if you look at the component plane visualizations, you have this business per employee, profit per employee. So, this on a gray scale, this is on a higher scale and that is a clearly a demarcating factor as far as the cluster that is formed of those banks. Now, if you look at another variable, say this is net non-performing asset. So, if these institutions were good from the point of view of business per employee, profit per employee on a high scale, they are also good from the point of view of this non-performing asset, keeping it down to a very low level. Right? Uh, we will also look at another example, which is um, the, we are looking at socio-economic development of world economies. Now, objective in such an application is to cluster world economies according to the level of their economic or socio-economic development. So, in this example, we are trying to look at clusters of economies according to their levels of economic or socio-economic development. So, what is the data? The data, so the data structure is like that, that we have world economies that is countries basically. So, each country, now in the previous example, we were looking at financial status of uh, financial institutions. So, there were a different set of variables on which the financial health of a financial institution is determined. When we are looking at countries, there is a different set of variables naturally, but the data still is multidimensional. So, we look at uh, the following aspects of economic development and economic fundamental indicators. So, for example, for each of the countries in this particular study, we look at income level, which is given through the gross national product per capita at purchasing power parity rate, growth of the economy characterized by the gross domestic product GDP growth rate, the level of investment of a particular country measured by gross domestic, domestic investment as percentage of the GDP, then inflation measured through GDP deflator, then structure of output, agriculture and industry value added percentage of GDP both as percentage of GDP. Then as a measure of openness of the economy, we look at export of goods and services which is taken as a percentage of GDP once again. Then role of government, the general government consumption percentage of GDP. Then the later indicators are private sector financing, domestic credit provided by the banking sector measured as a percentage of GDP, net borrowing lending on account of merchandise trade that is what is uh, measured through the resource balance. Then strength of the foreign exchange reserve that is the number of months of import cover of that particular country as a and the ratio of gross international reserves to imports efficiency of the financial market measured through interest spread of that country. Uh, in addition to these previous indicators, which basically are economic fundamental indicators, we also consider some social welfare indicators, because uh, the health of a particular country is also looked upon, when one is also uh, concerned about the social welfare level of that particular country. Now, these are standard uh, variables, which are used in order to measures uh, social welfares of uh, various countries, illiteracy rate, adult female, life expectancy at birth and various other labor force, female fertility rate, urban population, corruption uh, perception index and so on. So, that majority of the data have been collected from uh, world development indicators. I forgot to tell you what is the source of the data for the previous uh, application. The source of the data was Reserve Bank of India. Uh, the data source for this is the world development indicators of uh, uh, say indicators publication of the world bank. So, the data corresponding to 2001 have been chosen and the number of countries that is the cases is 125. So, what is the dimension of the data that is what we have. If we have 25 indicators, 25 indicators of economic development and socio-economic development and 125 such cases. the we have in all 125 by the number of dimensions, say 25, that is the dimension of the data for this particular application. Now, once again, we are trying to find clusters of economies in the data, which countries are similar in nature and so on. So, what we are, we are first looking at an agglomerative hierarchical clustering analysis using SAS. So, in this example, I also give you this particular uh, part of the SAS code, which was not given in the previous application. So, this is basically the SAS code. This is how the data actually looks like. This is for uh, the indicators, which are actually for uh, the social welfare indicators. So, these are the countries uh, ARG for example, is Argentina, Australia, Austria, Bangladesh, Belgium and all the data records, 125 records are there in alphabetical order. So, we view, we use a hierarchical clustering method and obtain this 
hierarchical clustering dendrogram tree for the world economic development. Now, as you can see that there are various type of types of clusters that emerge in the data uh, at various levels of resolution. So, broadly speaking there are two types of clusters which comes under these two branches. So, all the countries below this particular main branch are coming in one cluster and all the countries in this particular block here coming under this particular branch comes in one uh, cluster. Now, that is a very gross representation, gross clustering of the data. We should actually uh, make the level of resolution finer and then get to various types of uh, groups of countries. Now, if one looks at carefully at some of these groups here, say this particular cluster here is a cluster of mostly developed countries. As you see, the countries here are Australia, New Zealand, Germany. Denmark, the, uh, all these are abbreviated. So, G E R corresponds to Germany, D E N we have Denmark, this is Sweden, this is Netherlands, this is UK, Canada, France, Norway, the United States, the Czech Republic, Spain. So, these are basically that cluster of countries which are which have nicely emerged when we have applied this hierarchical cluster analysis to this particular data. Right. Now, there are two countries which have a very close nature of association which is Hong Kong and Singapore. Now, these of course, are two countries which depend very heavily on export and import and hence they have a very close nature of association. Now, there is another cluster of countries which is very close which is Austria, Switzerland, uh, this is Greece, Croatia, Portugal, Finland, Hungary and so on which have a very uh, means uh, good level of social welfare. It is interesting to find out where actually India is sitting. So, as you can see that IND is India and uh, we are sitting right next to Pakistan. We have PAK Pakistan here. So, this is basically uh, the cluster here BANG is the abbreviated form of Bangladesh. So, you see that from this particular branch here, there are two sub branches, one branch containing Bangladesh and India and the other branch contains Pakistan. So, at this particular level of resolution, we have the socio-economic development level of India, Pakistan and Bangladesh almost in the same level. There are other groups, other interesting groups of uh, countries that one gets. There is a group of country which is corresponding to uh, say very uh, underdeveloped African nations actually that also is somewhere here. I am unable to see from this particular uh, figure one can find out that quite easily. Uh, this is Zimbabwe, Kenya, Namibia, Ghana and so on. They also below Botswana, that is the uh, that is the group of that African clusters, Botswana and all those, they belong to this particular close cluster out here. Right? Now, if we look at the socio-economic development data, now the previous one was just economic development. Now, this uh, has changed over the years. This is the data corresponding to 2001, this picture has changed. So, this is considering only the economic variables, economic fundamental variables in the multidimensional data. And in the next figure, what we are going to see is the overall socio-economic development feature of this. Now, we see even more clearer clusters emerge actually in the data. There are three major clusters. This is one cluster, this is the second cluster and this is the third cluster which emerges from this particular data. If you go uh, coarser into this uh, level of resolution, you will find that there are mainly two clusters. Now, what is this cluster? This is Australia, Germany, France, Netherlands, Hong Kong, Italy, Sweden, United Kingdom, Finland, Australia, uh, Austria, Canada and so on. So, they are basically the league of developed nations. Uh, United States is sitting here and so will be the United Kingdom and uh, Japan, Norway and all those countries are present there. And apart from this, there is also a close association of type of countries. Now, where is India? India is now belonging here. So, it is basically in the group of developing countries along with uh, this Armenia, uh, Zimbabwe and Cameroon, Nepal, Ghana, Pakistan, etcetera. So, this is the group of that socio-economic clustering that India belongs to that is coming from the output of this hierarchical clustering method. There is also a close uh, group of countries which, are, which were erstwhile Soviet Union countries. 
and they broke up after uh, the Soviet Union actually broke into pieces. Uh, you will find that too in this particular figure, Armenia and those type of countries. So, they are also located somewhere here. We see a group of uh, countries here which are basically uh, European countries which are not as developed as this United States, United Kingdom, uh, Spain, New Zealand, Portugal, Greece and so on, Czech Republic, Hungary, Argentina also belonging to this particular cluster. So, nice type of clusters actually does act, uh, emerge from real life data. Now, as I was talking that uh, statistical cluster analysis is not the only method to look at clustering or rather to look at um, the, the type of cluster analysis hierarchical or non-hierarchical clustering that emerges from a data. One can also look at self-organizing feature map which comes under the philosophy of artificial intelligence. So, for, for uh, the same uh, multidimensional data, the socio-economic development data, one can obtain a some representation of the data and then the clusters in the data can also be uh, uh, found out actually. So, what we look at in the SOM is that patches of lighter shades gives rise to formation of clusters in those regions and patches of dark shades actually separate those clusters and cases which are belonging to those regions are outliers like this is an outlier, CNG is Congo, ANG is Angola. So, these are outliers in the world economic development, uh, socio economic development map and we see a clear formation of a clear cluster out here uh, because we have a lighter patch in gray scale and the countries all belonging to that particular patch here form one single cluster. And so, there is a cluster formation out here which is uh, written as cluster number 4. These are all actually low income African countries, uh, underdeveloped countries actually. So, all those are belonging to this particular cluster. Now, what is this cluster? Cluster number 3 are developing countries, mainly Latin American countries as you see here, El Salvador, Paraguay, Bolivia, then you will have Ecuador, Brazil and so on and Saudi Arabia etcetera are also present in that particular cluster. Argentina, Peru, Venezuela, they are on the boundary of that particular cluster. Now, there is a strong cluster formation out here on the right side of this particular map. What are those? Those were erstwhile Soviet Union countries which broke up. The, the, these are Azer, uh, Azerbaijan, Moldova I think, MLD, Belarus, Georgia, Ukraine and those type of countries, Kazakhstan, Russia are also in the boundary of that. Now, we have a very deep cluster here, very close compact cluster out here. What are those? Those basically are uh, the countries which are developed countries, Austria, France, Denmark, Finland, Norway. These are Scandinavian countries, three Scandinavian countries, Canada, Sweden, New Zealand, UK, Germany, US, Japan, Switzerland. Now, on the boundary of that is also sitting Austria, Belgium, Netherlands, right. And on the right hand side, we have a block of countries which are forming cluster number 2, which are East European developing uh, countries, right, like Latvia, Croatia, Slovenia and Estonia, Slovakia and all those, right. So, this is the self-organizing map cluster of the same multidimensional data. As we had seen in the previous example, this self-organizing map, the previous representation is, a, is on the two-dimensional SOM plane. One can look at the three-dimensional hill valley surface pl plot of the same map, uh, same clustering tendencies and wherein the clusters are indicated by the valleys. So, this is cluster number 1, which was present in the previous map in this location. This is the cluster of the developed countries. You see that that basically is sitting in this particular valley, very well separated by a high hill around that particular valley. So, the type of socio-economic development pattern um, is quite different of these countries than the rest of the world economies. So, the cluster number 2, which was on the bottom right side here is now represented in this particular corner here. This is the cluster 3 here, this is the cluster 4 here. Uh, the location of India is somewhere here, India, Yemen and uh, with Egypt, Morocco and all those countries sitting here. Uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh of course, are very nearby to the type of patterns that India is exhibiting. Now, here once again we have this interpretation that valleys of lighter shade separated by hills indicate clusters. The hill tops as we had discussed, this is a hill top, this is another small hill top. They are basically cases which are exceptional atypical observations, which are associated with outliers in the data.
uh, this is the component plane visualization, uh, what type of uh, things that we were discussing in the previous example also of this clustering tendency. Now, as I said that the principal component also is capable of giving us rough clusters in the data. This is a two dimensional principal component representation, wherein we have the two uh, axes as the two princi first two principal components in this data. And then if we have the projection uh, of the data uh, in the principal component plane, then we can also make out this rough clusters in the data, which are these are of course, subjective clusters that uh, we have here. Well, the clusters that we have formed here, they are also quite subjective, but they have quite well demarcated boundaries. So, you have cluster number this and cluster number this being separated by dark patches and similarly cluster this and this separated by these dark patches indicating that uh, members in cluster number 1 are quite different than the members in cluster number 3 or 2 or uh, this particular point here. So, we have this as the principal component projection of the same data and we also have a nonlinear projection, the Shaman's projection of the same data giving us also some rough clusters in the data. So, as we have learned that there are various ways of looking at this clustering um, patterns in the data. So, once we have multidimensional data, we can either look at various options that are available. Uh, we can apply standard statistical cluster analysis techniques and obtain uh, hierarchical clustering uh, leading us to dendrogram type of trees and then make out clusters from that dendrogram tree at a desired level of resolution in the data. We can look at a non-hierarchical way of looking at that particular data and then uh, forming non-hierarchical clusters using a k-means algorithm and then have clusters in the data. We can adopt a different approach. We can look at principal component analysis, we can look at the type of projection that a principal component analysis is capable of and then once the multidimensional data is projected onto a lower dimensional lower dimensional visualizable plane say up to three dimensions, we can look at that three dimensional or to two dimensional projection of the data and then make out rough clusters in the data uh, or we can actually go completely orthogonal to what uh, the statistical techniques have to offer. We can look at artificial intelligence approach, we can look at a self organizing map. Now, well I had given in this particular uh, uh, say presentation in of looking at this uh, real life data and uh, we had discussed about the self organizing map feature, uh, self organizing map uh, clustering techniques, but we have not looked into the theory part of it that is beyond the, uh, this particular multivariate statistical analysis course. These type of techniques are usually covered in courses on data mining or artificial intelligence applications. Uh, however, they are capable of uh, giving a nice clustering uh, of multidimensional data. The task basically is same, you know, uh, uh, we are looking at multidimensional data and we are looking at possible clusters that are emerging from the data. So, the approach may be different uh, on a uh, artificial intelligence mode, we are looking at self organizing map to be the technique and the output of that also leads us to same clustering of the data. Now, thus cluster analysis actually is usually uh, which is a form of exploratory data analysis is considered to be uh, a step before we go on to other type of uh, statistical analysis. Say for example, if we are looking at uh, say regression analysis, one would actually try to from a huge data set, one would look at homogeneous patches in the data, uh, homogeneous cases in the data and then apply further statistical analysis. For example, if one is uh, interested in building regression type of models, one will not actually take in into that particular one single model, uh, various heterogeneous uh, blocks or groups of data. One would like to first have an idea about the number or rather patches in the data, heterogeneous blo uh, homogeneous blocks in the data and then for, uh, for each of those homogeneous patches, the clusters in the data, one can look at. Uh, regression models in those different homogeneous patches. So, cluster, cluster analysis to me is very important uh, applied multivariate statistical method and that is what we tried to learn in theory and also in practice. So, from next time, uh, next lecture onwards what we will try to look at is another important uh, multivariate uh, applied multivariate technique of discriminant analysis and classification. Thank you.